Hello, sports fans and baseball fans and Stratomatic baseball fans. It me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, we're going to talk about my 2020 Phillies season through roughly Game 60. Most teams are at Game 60. Some are at 61. Even my Phillies really are only at 58 right now. But that's roughly a good spot to be in to discuss the 60 game point because as you remember the 2020 season was a COVID shortened season that was actually 60 games so we can almost do an apples to apples comparison of where we are and what the stats look like and all of that right now as compared to um, the actual 2020 season how the teams have done um, and uh, how the Phillies have done. Now, if you know, if you've been following, you know that the Phillies are way underperforming what they did in real life in 2020, and they are. That's true, they are. Uh, but we want to take a look, you know, take a look at the entire universe and see just how accurate it looks like the Stratomatic game is, um, you know, outside of my Phillies, and really just outside of my Phillies record, because the Phillies record is not very accurate as compared to real life. But the, um, you know, are the rest of the statistics going to be accurate is in comparison to real life. So I put together a spreadsheet that will look at the various aspects of the season in comparison. And then, in the second part of the video, we will look in depth at how the Phillies are doing themselves, the statistics for the Phillies and how we're actually doing. And then maybe we can draw some conclusions as to why the record is way, way worse than it should be in comparison to what the Phillies actually did in 2020 in real life. So let's get on with that look. First, we're going to look at the American League. And as you can see here, uh, let, me, let me make myself smaller so that I can get off to the side here. So uh, here is the American League, and uh, we will, yeah, okay. So this is the entire American League, and I have, I have the comparisons. I've got all the records. Um, that you can see the actual is on the left and the replay is on the right. Uh, I put in red anything that was four games different or worse, four games or more uh, different than re in real life. Uh, anything that was three games or less was, you know, pretty accurate. So if you look at the American League East, the thing you're going to notice here, I wrote, um, I wrote where, right here, same order. This is the only division so far that is, has so far through 60 games finished in the same exact order as was happened in real life. Uh, the Rays were in real life 40 and 20 and won the division. Now, right now in real life, they're 35 and 26 and five games worse, but they are still leading the division. The Yankees were 33 and 27, and in real life, and in the replay, they're 34 and 26, so they're only one game different. Uh, the Blue Jays were 32 and 28, and in the replay, they're 31 and 29. The Orioles were 25 and 35, and in real life, they're 22 and 38. And then the Red Sox were actually 24 and 36, and in the replay, they are four games worse at 20 and 41. So, and then you can see the similar things for the AL Central and the AL West, although the Central and the West did not fit, or have not finished so far through 60 games in the same order uh, as ha actually happened. The White Sox tied for second in real life, but they are leading the Central in the replay with a 40 and 20 record. And in fact, nobody in the Central had a 40 and 20 record. So they're overperforming by five games. Uh, the uh, West, uh, you can see the uh, A's, they were 36 and 24, and in the replay, they're 33 and 28. Uh, the Astros were 29 and 31. They're 30 and 30, so they're only one game different. So anyway, that's the American League. Now you can see the Rangers just were just crazy off the scale. 
the Rangers finished last in re, in actuality in 2020 with a 22 and 38 record, but they're 31 and 28. They're actually three games, like three games over 500, when they were way way under 500. So they are massively overperforming. Um, and so you could say are the White Sox at five games better. So with that having taken a look, let's uh, go over and take a look at the NL and see what's going on over there. So here is the NL, and uh, you can see um, that we've got some vast differences here. Um, the Phillies, of course, in real life, the Phillies were 28 and 32. And in the replay, we're 19 and 39, eight games worse than um, they actually did. The Braves are four games better. They were they finished 35 and 25, but they're 31 or no, they're is that 30? That's oh, I meant to put negative four. So yeah, they're four games worse. Um, so they are 31 and 29, four games worse. Um, the um. Let's see, what did I say? Yeah, the Cubs, if you look at the Central, the Cubs have the same exact record that they actually had. The Cardinals are four games worse. Um, yeah, overall, they're four games worse. Because, like, as I said, some teams didn't actually get to 60 games, but in, the, uh, in real life, most teams did play 60. So the Pirates were 19 and 41, but they are nine and a half games better. Again, they're kind of like the Rangers. They're way overperforming. They're 28 and 31. Uh, the Dodgers were 43 and 17, but they're 36 and 22. They're six games worse in the replay. Uh, but the Giants, you know, the Giants were, they're four games worse, or four games, no, four games better. The Giants are four games better. The Padres are only a game different. The Rockies are only two games different, um, or like one, one and a half or something. Uh, and the Diamondbacks are only like a game or a game and a half different. So by and large, what we're seeing here is that most, most teams were within three games of what they actually did. They didn't, it's not common for them to be four games or more, worse or better. So um, most of the teams fall into that category. So you can see, you know, there's one, two, three, four teams in the red on the NL, and one, two, three, four, five teams in the red. So that's nine teams out of 30. It's not even a third of the league that was um, four games or more different. So that's I guess that's not too bad. Um, now we'll take a look at the... Um, now we'll take a look at some of the... Well, we'll take a look at the Phillies. Let's take a look at the Phillies' overall stats. And I only put up... You know, I don't want to get into the weeds here, but... In general, in actuality, the team had a 514 earned run average and a 148 uh, whip and for pitching. And they have, in, in the replay, they have a 502 earned run average and a 136 whip. So the 136 whip is a little, that's a little, like, diff way different. That's seriously different. But the 502 earned run average as compared to the 514 is not too bad difference. Wise. In real life, they the Phillies hit 257 with 82 homers and scored 306 runs and allowed 311 runs. In the uh, replay, we're hitting 247, which is kind of I mean it's 10 points different, so that's that's kind of uh, you know significant. The home runs though are right there. I mean the home runs are like only three different, which is not too bad. The runs scored, again, very different. Uh, 306 in real life as, as opposed to 254 in the replay. But in the uh, replay, the runs allowed are like right there. They're practically right there. Uh, 311 as opposed to 310. 
And now we'll just take a look at a sampling of some players and how they um, did in comparison. So right here we've got, uh, you can see we got Jay Bruce. Jay Bruce in real life hit 198 with only six home runs. But in the replay, he is raking. He's hitting 301 with 14 home runs. So he is doing vastly better. Uh, Hoskins in real life hit 245 with just 10 homers. But in the replay, he's hitting 277 with 11. Now the home runs are right there, but the batting average is vastly better in the replay. Harper hit 268 in real life with 13 homers, and in uh, the replay, he's hitting 265 with 12, which is practically the same thing. It isn't exactly the same thing as we will see McCutcheon did, but it is right there. I mean, it's practically right there. And then uh, McCutcheon hit 253 with 10 home runs and 253 with 10 home runs. Same exact statistics uh, through 60 games. Or, well, 58 games. So, I mean, I guess he could hit another home run or maybe, maybe two in the last two games. Uh, but, I mean, he's right there. Then Aaron Nola and the pitch, the two starting pitchers I'm going to compare here are vastly different. Uh, Nola was 5-5 five and five with a 328 earned run average, but in the replay, he's 4-5 and five with a 420. And Zach Wheeler was 4-2 and two in real life with a 292 earned run average, and in the replay, he is 6-4 and four with a 458. So he is uh, vastly different, and, um, you know, that's that's where we are with that. So... Those are the comparisons that I wanted to show you, but now let's get into the uh, let's get into the season, the season stats, or not not that. Let's see, season stats for the Philadelphia Phillies so far. So we'll go to uh, team team stats. So you can see right here on our main page, we are. Uh, we're 19 and 39. Uh, home, we're 11 and 17. On the road, we're 8 and 22. And um, in extra innings games, we're 1 and 6. And in one run games, we're 2 and 11. So that's probably, those two things are probably two of the big reasons why the, the record is vastly different. One in six in extra inning games, you got to think that the real Phillies probably were better than that. I didn't look that up, but I would have to guess they were. And in one run games, two and 11, the Phillies, the real Phillies had to be better than that. You, almost anybody has to be better than that. So uh, there you go. And we're three and seven in our last 10. So uh, let's look at the primary, primary statistics. Again, we have Bruce hitting 301 with 14 home runs and even five triples. Can you imagine Jay Bruce hitting five triples? But that's where he is. Um, and then Baum is hitting 280. He's hitting 280, but only with four homers and 11 doubles. Hoskins, again, as I mentioned, 277 with 11 home runs. Harper hitting 265 with 12 home runs. McCutcheon, 253 with 10. Um, then you got real, now real Muto has been making a comeback because uh, no joke at one point in this season, he was in the one sixties for batting average and he's fought his way all the way back to two nineteen. So the two nineteen, though it looks bad in comparison to what he really did, it is actually pretty good right now for where he came from. So he's hitting 219 with seven homers. So he's starting to he's starting to heat up a little bit. You got Quinn hitting 198 with six home runs. So we're hitting 247 as a team, as I had mentioned before, with 79 home runs. The 79 home runs again is right in the ballpark of what they actually really did. The 247 is about 10 points worse, though. Uh, and then here's what the pitching is doing so far. Uh, you've got, uh, you got some good relievers here. Parker and Brogdon are doing really well. Um, and, and Parker actually has one start, but he's been getting into a lot of games. He's pitched 20 innings. Uh, Brogdon with a 279 earned run average in almost 10 innings pitched. Um, 
Then you got, you know, again, Nola, 4 and 5 with a 420 earned run average. Pretty disappointing. Wheeler, 458 earned run average in 70 innings. And, um, uh, you know, and then uh, you can take a look here at the, at the rest of it here. But that's the, you know, the 502 earned run average is a little better than we did in real life, but it's not much better. And not enough better that it really would be. Um, you know, worth anything to us uh, to say that it was better. So uh, that's where we are, and then of course we'll look at the standings all uh, overall. But I mean, I already did that kind of. Um. So that's that's what the league looks like. So I, I would have to say, <clears throat> really, overall. The accuracy of the game doesn't seem to be in question because, by and large, it has been mostly pretty accurate. Even the Phillies, the record the record is way off, but a comparison of the statistics shows when you drill down to the statistics, it shows that generally um, it's right about where it should be, um, you know for the statistics for the, the team itself. So, you know, something's going on. We're not, maybe we're not hitting in the clutch. We're losing uh, more one-run games than you would think we should. We're losing more um, extra inning games than you really would think we should. Again, not hitting in the clutch. I mean, I played a game recently where Harper came up, it must have been three times, where he could have knocked somebody in and he got out. So, you know, if that kind of thing happens, not hitting in key situations, that's, that's going to affect the record. So I think that's probably what it is. Um, and then there's the West. I'll get the NL West in here for a look. But uh, really we're, we're focused mainly on the NL because, you know, the Phillies are in the NL. Um, so we are we got a 328 winning percentage and so does Boston. So we're in a practical tie with Boston for worst team in the league. But uh, nobody else really is even close. Kansas City maybe, but they're still winning percentage wise they're still a little better. So we'll see. Um, I don't know if there's anything I can do to make this better. Maybe steal some more bases, take some extra bases on hits that I wasn't doing before. But the Phillies are really a team of DHs. They don't. It, they you know it, it doesn't lend itself to their um, strong suit to take extra bases and run and steal. They're not that kind of a team. The 2020 version certainly wasn't, and I don't even think the present version is. So um, that's where we are. So I would be interested what you guys think. Um, what do you think is the real problem here? What's the driver behind the um, abnormally different record as in comparison to, you know, the statistics, which by and large, like I said, mostly are about, you know, are, are pretty accurate through 58, 60 games. I'd be interested to hear, you know, leave your comment below in the comment section. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel really helps me out. Send it to other people you think might be interested. But for right now, that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z. Bob Zolke, signing off.